Hi there, Robin here from Expert On, and today we're going to be talking about the head rush. But first, we're going to do a quick little comparison because if you've watched a lot of videos on head rush, uh, their pedal boards or their giga boards, and they always show a speaker with it, this is the speaker they've been showing off a lot lately. But now they have a brand new speaker just for their product. Uh, it works with everything else, but we'll get the differences out of the way right off the hop. This one has been specially made to maximize the performance of their products and products similar to theirs. So that's gonna be the big difference. If you've already bought one of these, which is the Alto TS312, you're good, keep going. You know how to use it. You're gonna do an awesome job with that speaker. But if you're looking for something a little bit better and a little bit more refined for what you have, then this is what you wanna look at. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy off the table. Now the similarities between the two stops at the cosmetics and the driver package. Outside of that, the way the speaker was designed internally with the amp plate on the back uh, was specifically made for head rush. And that's why this is so important to talk about today because it's not just for somebody who's a guitarist or a bassist, but it's also a great product if you're a drummer or a keyboardist. So those are big pluses. If you need a speaker to play back and you wanna have all the added benefits of a speaker that has 650 watt driver and another 350 watt horn on top of it. This is gonna do the job. That's why it's called an FRFR, full frequency, flat response. You get out of it what you put into it. So that's a really big plus. Now, again, don't be deceived. Yes, it looks like the Alto, but it's not. When we look at the backside, this is where the big giveaway is right away the knobs and this isn't just they changed the print on the back and said oh it's the same it's not we've tested this what you have here is a full line input from zero all the way to 11 and they give you two inputs on that's really really nice now that makes the speaker very detailed and with the actual thousand watt amp plate on it with the 2000 peak it certainly gives you a ton of energy and it has a lot of energy in reserve. That's a big plus. What we're going to do is we're gonna take it from here and we're gonna set it up and we're gonna play on it. Now, if you're looking for a speaker just to have at home and you're always gonna run it off of a mixing board, this is also a good video for you to watch because this speaker with line inputs, if I don't have any intention of playing microphones directly into the back of my speaker, you might really like to get one of these. Uh, it's cool, it's awesome. Uh, if you're going to be using it for as well, for things like karaoke, and you're using it with a mixing board, this will work as well, because you've got a lot of stuff to do with that as well. All right, so there you go. We'll take it from here, we'll set it up, we'll see what it sounds like. Uh, for a moment, we will just play it a little bit here, just to show you how this knob works as a full line input versus one of those combo knobs. So we'll set this up. Do, 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 do. And because I don't play guitar, we're going to cheat a little. What we'll do now is we'll bring it to the back, we'll set it up, and we'll hear what it sounds like from a distance. All right, so here we are. We've got the head rush set up on an actual stand. So this, we're going to play it as a PA speaker for now. But it, remember, uh, it's for you know amp modelers, or if you have a guitar effects board, and that's pretty much what you're going to start off with. That's why we're talking about it because it's an FRFR and we'll cover more of that after the demo when we bring it back to the table. We'll talk about the frequency, why a two-way speaker. What, what actually defines it as an FRFR. So we'll take a listen to it for now. It's set at six out of 11. And this time I'm gonna turn off my actual mic. So now what you have is you've got the Marantz MPM 3000 picking up all the audio. It's picking up the ambient sound of the space. And we're gonna play a demo off of that.
Okay, so again, I don't personally play guitar. I wish I did, uh, but I don't. And I've heard this used by guitars, so I can tell you there, it sounds really good on that part. Uh, so we're playing it off the mixing board. Now that's another take advantage of situation because it's got two inputs on the back of it. So why not have your model plugged in the one side and have a mixing board plugged into the other side. You've got gain controls for both of them, line inputs all around, so we're okay there. So now what we'll do is take it off to the table. We'll wrap it up by talking about the frequency and the two-way speaker and the FRFR. All right, so we've got it back at the table. So I wanted to cover a couple of little features on it uh, in some of the details. One, frequency response. Uh, the speaker was built, uh, the system is designed and engineered for uh, 46 hertz to 22 kilohertz, but they cap it at 53 by 20. Now, why would you cap the highs and lows a little bit by about, you know, what is it? Uh, I'm gonna say it about uh, 3 dB. The idea there, is we just like volume if we turn it up too loud it can distort the sound same thing with frequency if we get lower than it can handle it'll distort and if we get higher than it can handle it'll distort so by actually pulling back on that a little bit and limiting that we know we're not going to get there we're not going to have any problems with the sound quality of the system itself uh, that's a big note now for the box design if this is made out of wood it would have to weigh a lot more. I mean, right now, this thing only weighs in at 36 pounds. Uh, and the reason is, is engineering. When we stand the speaker up, the way it's designed with the actual indentation where the handle grips are, and there are a lot of handles. There's four handles on this unit, two in the back, two in the sides. I mean, this is built really well for that. Um, but it also adds to an engineering program which allows it to be very rigid so this way the box can't expand and contract because of the design and the shape by having these actual designs notches and all of that in the back here everything adds up to making a very very solid box which allows the box to be lighter but at the same time very solid in sound uh, I know that's a lot to say but I mean it is what it is it also has fly wire attachments in the top and the bottom if you need it they're there and just like how we had it in the back, it does have a pole mount with the screw on the bottom. Uh, it doesn't have rubber feet. It just has plastic molding all the way down to the bottom. And we're making two XLR quarter inch combo jacks in the back. It does have an output. So if you want to link to another speaker or bring this back to a mixer, you can do that as well. Uh, the contour button in the back has relationship to, am I using it on the floor? Am I putting it up on a pole? I'm putting it up on a pole in an open space you may want to push that button because it'll compensate for the fact there's no wall behind it or floor underneath it. So that's what's going on there. And the ground lift is traditional. Uh, if you have a humming, buzzing sound, that's sound of poor grounding or uh, the different ground between this unit and whatever you're plugging into, that'll help relieve that problem. The grill is thick and solid, contoured really well, and also thick. So this way, no artificial sounds coming off the grill itself. Outside of that, I don't think there's a lot more to say about it. If you want to learn more about the product or about the price points, we're going to have links down below for you on all of that. So that'll be covered there. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below as well. We'll try and get back to you as soon as we can on that. But I think that pretty much covers it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. That's always nice that you subscribed and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.